Well, this is interesting. No sooner did we start talking about how to play this endgame in general than Chessbase released news of Fat Fritz, their own AI program, with one illustrative game that featured the Queen versus Rook endgame. This happened on uh, Tuesday, I believe. Um, what is that? The 12th, I think, uh, the 13th of August 2019. So this position is from the game after Black's 71st move. Now what's interesting about this, although it is two computers playing against each other, I believe that neither of them is actively using table bases, although they did train with table bases. So let's move into this position. As you can see, um, white is lost with a rook against a, uh, or a, a knight against a rook and a pawn in a double rook ending from black's point of view. So we go here and like this. Now, with a simple trick, black simplifies to a one single pawn end game. And as is often the case, the way to win this end game is to sacrifice the rook in order to promote to a queen, just like this. So here we are in our ending. Let's see how these two mega talented computers do not using table bases. Okay, first off, this is the defender's response, and that is absolutely correct not just compared to table bases, but according to our system. Because as you can see, it's following the principle of move toward the center at every opportunity. Always try to grab space. So um, black takes a reasonably good check. Uh, it's worth noting here that the defender's response, there is an equally good response, uh, which is king to c5. Uh, and the reason that it's good is because the rook is staying close enough to not fall prey to a fork. And we're body checking the opposing king. Uh, but that's just an FYI for your information. That's not that important. Okay, so far so good. And we bring the king forward. Now in this position also it's worth noting uh, I've given the rule several different places that if you can form a rosette it's usually the best move. And in this case, black king to c5 is equally good compared to the move played. Uh, just so you see the rule is valid. Now, uh, here is the first place we see the defender not play the very best move according to table bases, which is what makes me think that they're not using table bases. So it goes here. Uh, giving check from d3 is actually one move better, uh, but big deal. Either way, the defender is following the principle that when you don't know what else to do, attack an opposing piece. So we attack the queen. The queen falls back here, and he takes up the uh, wishbone position, and the defender follows the principle of turn a wishbone into a thorn. Uh, or the attacker does, and the defender follows the principle. If you can form a rosette, it's usually your best move. So far, things are looking very good here. Not too surprisingly for machines. So uh, all we're doing here is forcing the defender to concede ground. Um, I think you can see that moving the king to the left toward the A file uh, is just an immediate loss. Uh, so he has to go either F2 or F1. Uh, they're roughly equivalent. So we go here, give the check there. Now, what do you do? Well, the two, the two possible moves, again, are close, but the defender is choosing the one that is one move less good. The best move is interpose the rook. Um, the second best move is king g2 and black forms one of the known positions, uh, the wedge position. Now in this case, the defender does not play um, the, uh, a, a fairly good move. Again, it's one move worse. 
But when you're the defender and you're in the wedge position, what I recommend is change the wedge into a lightning like that. And that is, in fact, the best move. It basically passes the question of what are you going to do to the attacker uh, because the wedge and the uh, wish or the wedge and the lightning positions here. Um, in both cases, the attacker has to know what he's doing to break them down. Uh, but instead, the defender goes here, uh, conceding space when I don't think you need to. OK, we've been here before. Give the check here. Um, and again, interposing the rook is slightly better. I'm not sh I wish I knew how this computer had trained using the table bases to decide to do this instead, because it is interesting. And once again, the attacker forms the wedge. That is the, the best position. We're in a sort of absolute seventh here. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with that, you can sort of see it. OK, now here the defender um, loses two moves. Uh, rook h8, uh, like this, is a better option. But we have what we have. We go here. Now things get complicated. What do you do in this position? Well, if your immediate inclination is to trap the defending king, you are right. That is the best attack. Take away all the space remaining to him and then attack the rook. Because if you go back here, what you notice is that when he goes like this, the defender is really trying to play a form of harassment defense by placing the rook on the same diagonal as the king. Uh, it's much harder to fork. The problem is that with only one square separating the king and the rook, it's not a terribly effective harassment defense. So giving check here and then going back and attacking, you'll notice that the rook has no checking squares. Um, and it's, it's best move, well, there isn't anything terribly good at this point. Uh, if you go there, uh, then king f3, because notice that the queen is controlling the d2 checking square. So the, king, the rook can get one check in, but now we're simply threatening mate, and the, uh, the defender is lost. Or if we back up queen g5, uh, it's also possible to go over here. But again, the rook is going to go lost to a fork now. We give a check there, and we're holding the forking square on d4. So the defender goes that direction instead. So now we check here. We're still holding the forking square on d4. Uh, and uh, the attacker or the defender goes back. And now again, we're controlling checking squares. So the rook cannot check from b2 if the king advances, and it can't check from a6. So bring the king forward, threatening mate can't be bad. And if you get a check there, come on down here. The checks are over, and the defender's just plain lost. Uh, there's a trick here that it's important to know about. When the king goes there, taking advantage of the rook's ability to cover, uh, you can uh, simply play queen uh, g5 here. Um, or you can give this check, take that check, and trap him against his rook. OK, so let's back up to the attempt at a harassment defense. Uh, instead, the um, attacking king does something kind of peculiar here, which is to give him a more effective harassment defense, which the defender, of course, takes. Now we have almost a full harassment defense. Uh, the only weakness is that the defending king is already somewhat cornered. So what, uh, what the attacker does now is begin playing to control checking squares. 
uh, remember it's uh, the goal is not to control necessarily B3 um, or E7, but rather to control the squares that will enable the king to advance and trap the defending king. So we go queen g7. See how we're controlling some checking squares, allowing the attacking king to move forward. Um, if we get the check here, then there, and there's uh, the game is lost uh, because now it's the simple tactic there. Check him off the side of the board, and then when he leaves, you have a fork. Okay, so, and now the problem the defender has is there's no convenient way to bring the pieces back together again. He's just trying to save his rook. So we go there. Well, walk in. Uh, nothing wrong with creating some mate threats because now he has to give the check and we come forward and he's out of checks again. He can reunite. Uh, pieces, uh, he can't reunite pieces with uh, rook h3 because then queen g1 is just plain mate. So instead he goes this way, uh, playing a distant defense. So we give a check there. The attacker, uh, oh, I, I see what, I, what, I, what my notes were. Uh, if you saw that that gives you an immediate fork, uh, you're right. I don't know, again, I don't know how these computers learn to digest the table bases. Uh, but the attacker went here. There's another option where you go like that, simply attacking the rook and taking control of the square that it stands on. So that when it gives the check, the king can step there and now, once again, we have a mate threat, and the defender can't give check. So if we go here to escape from it, we have a check there. And you can see that there's going to be a check from c1 winning the rook on the next move. OK, so instead, the attacker went here, there, and goes there, and also picks it up. Now, this was the same length as queen h8. So going from here, going this way, and going this way are the same length to winning the rook. Um, but I find this maneuver more commonly occurring and much easier to remember. Uh, so if you're able to remember to do that and then pick up the uh, rook that way, great, good for you. Um, but I find that pattern a lot more memorable. But either way, there, there, and there goes the rook. And from that point on, the game uh, is no longer interesting to us. So um, we can see that these artificial intelligence uh, systems without table bases connected have learned a very great deal about how to play the end game, but they're no more perfect than you or I will be. And their play in this example uh, replicates some of the patterns that we've been talking about.